spicy Asian noodles. It's kind of my thing. I've been making so many spicy Asian noodles for my channel for like pretty much forever. So you know that when I say these are the three that you need to know about, well then I think you better watch. All right, so bang bang chicken is a classic Szechuan dish, usually served cold, but with like this hot, numbing, tingling, spicy red sauce, love it. But what I thought was why not add some noodles because you know, we just love noodles. I love noodles. Let's get into the chicken first of all. There's a little technique that I have here for poaching chicken, which is like buttoned down, you know, perfect every time. Take your chicken breast now. I know you guys know I'm a legs and thigh girl, but this dish kind of really calls out for chicken breast. You want like a soft kind of shredded chicken sort of, and, and a sort of more mild chicken flavor, if that makes sense. We're all about the sauce for this one. Anyway, for this one, I'm using breast. Um, that goes, <laughs> that's a really weird sound. <laughs> Literally sound like that just. So for this one, we are using chicken breast Pop your chicken into uh, some water, just sort of enough to kind of cover the chicken. And then we want to go in with some flavorings here. So I've got some ginger, some garlic, and because I want like maximum flavor out of these guys, I'm going to give them a light bruising so they release all of their aromas and flavor. I've said flavor a million times in this video, but you know what? There is a lot of flavor in this recipe. <laughs> Scoop those pieces out into that water. And then I also want some spring onion as well. Like I often have some spring onion kind of like kicking around in the bottom of my crisper. So it's a great way to use that up. You don't need the most perfect spring onion here because it's just for the broth. And now we've started with room temperature water. That's on purpose. Now I want to turn the heat on because that's going to give our chicken time to kind of gently warm through as the heat sort of gets higher and higher in that pot. So we're kind of just coaxing the chicken into being cooked without like kind of shocking it with like, you know, really high heat. And that's gonna give us a juicier chicken breast. So wait till this comes to a simmer and then I'll tell you what to do next. All right, so now that you can see those little bubbles, now I don't want you to get any further with the bubbles. I just want that really gentle bubbling here. Now you can let this go for eight minutes. So these are two 200 gram chicken breasts, just so you know the, about the size. Um, uh, so eight minutes. All right, so while that's happening, let's do our spicy sauce. Yes my favorite bit. Okay, what we need to do is talk about Sichuan peppercorns, which are in fact not peppercorns. <laughs> I know, very confusing. Um, Szechuan peppercorns are not related to peppercorns at all. They're actually the red little husk of the seeds of a prickly ash shrub or prickly ash tree. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting, guys, is when you're buying Szechuan peppercorns, have a look in here. now. As I said, it's that red husk on the outside that actually gives you all the tingling sensation and the numbing and the heat and that kind of citrus flavor that, that Szechuan peppercorns are renowned for. If you have a look in here, you can see there are actually some little black peppercorns in here, but there's only a couple. Those black peppercorns are actually not what you want. Um, they will be all gritty and grainy and they don't have any flavor at all. So when you're buying Szechuan peppercorns, make sure you've got mostly red husk and not too much of the little black peppercorns themselves. So there you go, a little tip. Um, we want to get these toasting though, because that's going to release the most amount of flavor. Pop those into a dry pan. Now, a lot of you guys ask me where you can buy Szechuan peppercorns. Any Asian grocer is going to have them, but do you know what? Have a look online as well. That's oftentimes the easiest way to get a hold of them. And once I can start to see some little tendrils of smoke there and I can smell, you can literally smell like the citrus kind of aroma coming off those peppercorns or that, you know, they should just call it Sichuan husks. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I want you to get some sesame seeds in there now. I'm just going to push those around and lightly toast them. And once I can see that kind of light blonde golden kind of color in there, these are good to go. Now you just want to grind these to a fine powder. So this is the kind of situation you're after here, a nice fine powder and a bowl. Now to that, I want to add some soy sauce. 
And here's an interesting one. This is Chinese black vinegar. It has more of a kind of fruity note than a just straight out like white vinegar. Um, so Chinese black vinegar, if you can get it, if you can't just do like half white, half balsamic vinegar, that works too. And some chili oil. So watch with the chili oil. Different brands uh, will be spicier or less spicy. I don't mind if it's too spicy, so I go pretty hard with the chili oil. Now the other thing here I'm using is some peanut butter. So it's not uh, typically uh, traditional, uh, but you would usually use like a Chinese sesame paste or roasted sesame paste, which I actually find really difficult to get a hold of. So I'm sure you guys have a problem with that as well. So I just use peanut butter, not quite the same flavor, but you get the same sort of nutty creaminess. And then because, you know, I'm me and I need more spicy things. And actually, you know, this dish really, it's, you know, the magic combo here is that positioning of the Szechuan peppercorn and the numbing and the tingling and really kind of spicy kind of heat. That's really where the magic happens in this dish. So do try to push it as far as you can. Uh, I'm gonna add some more chili flakes here, more spice. Now you're gonna need to, it's a little bit awkward to mix this one because of the peanut butter, but just kind of get in there, give it a whisk. I'm gonna pour some hot liquid from the chicken poaching stock later so that'll help dissolve that peanut butter a little bit as well. So the chicken breast has had its cooking time. Now what I wanna do is turn the heat off and just let that chicken sit in the hot water there for 10 minutes. That's another 10 minutes and it's just gonna slowly cook through. Okay, so chicken has had its lovely warm resting time. What I wanna do now is just scoop some of this stuff off the top and chicken pieces out and I want to get them straight into a water bath filled with ice. That's going to stop the cooking process, make sure that they don't overcook and get dry. And also it means that they're going to get nice and cold so I'm going to be able to you know, shred them quicker. Now just take your cooled chicken pieces and just shred that up. Now back into our saucepan here, we have some lovely flavored cooking stock here. So let's just scoop out a little bit of that and that's gonna go into our sauce. And now we're coming to my favorite part, the bit where we get everything together. So I've got some noodles here. These uh, were dried udon noodles. Uh, I cooked them and then just rinsed them till they were nice and cool and tossed them in some sesame oil so they're nice and pliable. And a little, or a decent, or a big handful of those and then some of your chicken on top. Some cucumber, I've just got some cucumber matchsticks that I sliced up here. And now that all important sauce. Now you wanna be generous with that sauce. This is where all the flavor is coming from. I want almost like a little swimming pool of sauce in the bottom of the dish here. Now mix everything together. Oh, look at that sauce underneath. Mm. one. Holy smokes, that is releasing endorphins in my brain as we speak. The chili and the Szechuan pepper combo is like fire, but really good fire. That citrusy flavor comes through and then you get wham, like this like tingling, numbing thing going on. Literally, it's like, wow, wow, wow. It's like a wow moment. Chili garlic oil noodles, one of my all time favorites. I've never made them in less than 10 minutes, so I'm gonna give it a go today. It's a bit of a challenge day today, so we'll see how we go. Um, I've got a hack for a couple of different things here, so we'll go through that later, maybe. I mean, I probably should do it before the timer starts, but I don't know, we'll just go. <laughs> 10 minutes, I've given myself 10 minutes, let's go, on the clock, okay. So I'm gonna get the kettle on, I learned this from all the Jamie Oliver videos, you know that thing that Jamie Oliver started doing when he was like, five ingredients, 10 minutes, and like boiling the kettle is better than boiling it on the pot, but I will get my pot heating up too. I learned from my 15 minute fried chicken video that I should not talk so much and just get the cooking done. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, let me see how much overtime we get which I haven't uh, quite mastered yet, but we'll see. <laughs> um, all right, so no, I don't need those yet. Uh, so the point with the chili garlic oil noodles is that you wanna be making sort of like a mix here in your bowl, uh, and then some hot oil goes on that a bit later on, and that makes your sauce. So I'll pull my garlic out here, and I want like, well, depending on what you like, I like my it's chili garlic oil noodles, right? So I want to taste all of those things. So I want quite a bit of garlic. I think I'm going to make like a two serve kind of situation. So what's that like? 
you know, four or five cloves of garlic. Yeah, that'll do. And then let's crush that. And I want quite a fine chop here. So I got my, do you know what? This is what I need to do. I need to do this. Yes. This will make the skins come off quicker. Right. That's an old Asian mum thing. Let's get this into here. I mean, it really does work. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> All right, so. Ta-da! Water is already boiling. Amazing. Okay. Uh, now, I have a little hack here for the noodles, uh, and I don't think I'm going to get them in quite yet because I want to kind of do them right at the last minute. But um, you know, like how Chinese egg noodles, um, those hand-pulled ones, that's kind of the traditional noodle for this dish. Uh, but they take hours. I mean, I do have a video on how to make them, but that's not really going to help you out in a 10-minute noodle dish challenge. <laughs> So what I thought was, instead of using the traditional hand-pulled wheat noodles, I would use like a fresh pappardelle kind of noodle or a pasta. So this is not fresh pappardelle because I couldn't find it at my supermarket, um, but it's dried. So I think this is going to work out nicely because you still got those thick, that kind of thick, wide noodle situation, which I think will work out well, but we'll see. Okay, so garlic into my dish here. So this is where all the magic's going to happen here. But we need to get all these other bits and pieces in there first. Oh, I need to get my oil heating up too. So the oil is going to mix with all of this, going to make the sauce, going to make everything amazing. So get that nice and hot. Oil goes in. How much oil? Oh, I'll just, I'll put that much and then I can always fix it up later. Okay, what's going on here? We've got like seven minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. What's wrong? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> We've still got seven minutes. Oh, six minutes. <laughs> okay, so. That's not fresh pasta. I, I just said that I didn't have fresh pasta, so we had to go with dried. Or did I say so fresh I again? Oh, my God. <laughs> Hayley, by the way, is getting very stressed out about how long it's going to take for this pasta to cook. Okay, so if it's not fresh, I should probably get it in the, are you saying I should get it in the pot now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get it in the pot now. This is a good point, really, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, this is gonna be, this is not, <laughs> I think it's still, it's gonna be fine. It will cook in six minutes, maybe. <laughs> okay, um, so, chili flakes. Oh my God, so that's telling me I have five minutes. Is there any way to make this cook faster? <laughs> I think I should put, I need to put salt in there too. Okay, salt, all right, go. Okay, I'm gonna, well, I think, I think that's enough chili flakes because I want to put some chili oil in there as well a bit later on. I've got sesame seeds, oh, which camera? This camera. <laughs> I've got sesame seeds, all right, so. I'm gonna slice up this cucumber for a little bit later on. Cause for me, like I wanna have like the kind of garlic oil noodle thing going on. And then you have really beautiful, fresh sort of strips of cucumber and coriander that make everything kind of punchy at the end. All right. Oops, strips, nice strips. So that is like kind of for the end. Could have done a better job of slicing there. Anyway, we're in a rush, aren't we? We're in a rush, okay. Um, what else do I need? I might put some of my coriander stems into this business here, because you kind of get a really good flavor from those stems. All right, that's good. Oh, oh, what's happening there? <laughs> Let's have a look in here. Oh yeah, that's looking good, great. See, that's the kind of thing that I wanted. I wanted a really like wide kind of pasta thing. Well, I wanted a wide noodle kind of thing going on. So hopefully that will 
work. All right, so this, uh, what do I need? What do I need? I need chili oil. Chili oil. Um, let's see. I've got chili oil, I've got chili crisp. I'm kind of running low on my chili oil here, so I might do a bit of both. Let's see. So if you want the recipe for this chili oil, you can find that on my website, um, or you can use a store-bought one as well. That's totally cool. Oh, look at the color, that's great. The point is that that oil has some beautiful spices and Szechuan peppercorns in there. So you're getting like that kind of like numbing, spicing kind of thing going on. Numbing, spicing, numbing, spicy thing going on. Okay, I'm gonna put some chili crisp in there too. Why not? Clean spoon. Keep it clean. Although it's, it's a lot messier than when I usually cook. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna put some of this in there. I mean, look at that. That looks incredible. Yum, I'm already really excited. The other thing about the sauce for this is, wait, do I wanna put the, do I wanna put oil? Oh no, no, I'll put this stuff in. Okay, soy sauce. Oh my God. Two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. Vinegar. So this is a Chinese black vinegar, but you could just use like a, a little bit of balsamic and white vinegar if you can't get the black vinegar. And a little dash of dark sweet soy sauce. Okay, give that a mix. All right. Now, I think that's hot. Just let me check. Oh yeah, that's hot. Okay. Oil is hot, so this is going to be dramatic, hopefully. <laughs> so this gets poured on. Oh, it wasn't quite, oh. I mean, it wasn't like hugely dramatic, which I guess is good. It didn't like burn anything, so that's good. But you want that little bit of sizzle, definitely. Let me see. Oh, that looks so good. Check that out. Okay, so now, now we are just about noodles, everyone. Okay, I think these are looking good. I need like, oh my God, I have one minute. One minute. Okay. Straight in. And so you're kind of getting that like, you know, like, like wide noodle vibe going on. Okay, I definitely, oh, I want some of my cucumber in here. Definitely want some of my coriander. Yeah. Oh. You know you're rushing when you can't even use chopsticks. <laughs> and there you go. I mean, the timer hasn't even gone off. Look at that. We're done. Look at these noodles. Spicy, yum, amazing, yay! So happy with myself. <laughs> Haley's like, why are you gonna be so messy? <laughs> I tried. Let me see. Mm. Okay, so the pasta probably could have done like with another like two minutes, <laughs> but. It's still really good, and they're just al dente. I mean, you know, they're still great noodles. Um, a really good hack for like Chinese wheat noodles, and that sauce is so delicious. Oh, I'd call that a win. I think it's a win. Mm. That was a really messy noodle eating just there. Fantastic topic. <laughs> If you kind of imagine like the very best, most unctuous Italian pork ragu and then combine that with Szechuan spicy flavors and hand pulled noodles and all the good things, then you've got this dish. <laughs> okay, let's get started on the sauce first of all. So this is the simple part. We want some oyster sauce, some soy sauce, some dark soy sauce, sugar, and just a little dash of vinegar here. So if you can get a hold of Chinese black vinegar, that would be the best one to use. I've just got some regular rice vinegar here. And just give that a mix. Now the porky sauce part of this dish is totally not traditional at all, but it's really tasty. Just trust me on this one. I'm gonna heat up a wok or a large frying pan, add some oil, 
And then here's our very first non-traditional ingredient and that is some cherry tomatoes. Now stand back because this is going to splash a little. Now what you want to do here is really blister those tomatoes. I want them to get all caramelized and charry on the outside. And that's when they'll release all their sweetness and flavor. So we're kind of like wok roasting, I guess, rather than oven roasting. Okay, now see that color on that tomato? That's exactly what we want. And why tomatoes? So tomatoes have a natural amount of glutamates, which is flavor and umami and all those good things. Now I'm going to add some garlic and some ginger. Now I'm going to go in with some spices, some ground Szechuan peppercorns. These guys are going to give a beautiful numbing sensation and a very high kind of citrus note to them. And some chili powder. And now here's the next non-traditional ingredient and that is sweet paprika. This is going to give us a beautiful red color without flavoring the dish too much. It's really good if you don't want to use a heap of chili powder because you can keep it really mild. And now for the pork. Now when that pork is just about cooked, pour in that sauce that we made earlier. Now turn the heat down a little bit. Just let that pork simmer away and soak up all of that flavor. Just a couple of minutes. Okay, so this pork is looking good. You guys will not believe the amount of intense flavor we have in there in such a short amount of time. I'm just gonna turn this off for a minute and let's go talk about our noodles. So I've got some hand pulled noodles here. You can find the video on how to make these on my YouTube channel. They're at the point now where I wanna stretch them a little more as I put them into the boiling water. Now you just wanna stretch these out straight into the water. And these noodles are kind of like a very rustic, hearty, chewy, beautiful texture to them. Uh, they kind of remind me, I guess, of like an Italian pappardelle or a fresh Italian pappardelle. Uh, so if you did want to use a pasta or an udon noodle as well, that would be a good substitute. You don't have to go to the trouble of making these from scratch, although it is worth it. These only need a couple of minutes, but before they're finished, I'm going to scoop out some of this cooking liquid in case I want to thin down my sauce a little bit later on. Okay, so these are looking good. Take them over to my sauce. I'll turn that heat on under the sauce and get those noodles in there. And now this is the part I love. Give everything a mix in there. Oh, look at that beautiful sauce and those noodles. Now some of that starchiness from the noodles is thickening up that sauce. I'm just going to add a little bit of that cooking liquid that we saved. Just a dash and mix that through. Oh, the smell right now, so incredible. Now just pop this out onto a serving plate. And just a little sprinkling of spring onion. And there you go, spicy pork, hand pulled noodles. I mean, I just, I don't know what is better than this. Look at that, look at that beautiful noodle. Oh. The flavor of the Szechuan peppercorn and that beautiful, that little bit of tanginess from that vinegar really comes through but I'm telling you those noodles, they are the star of the show. Mm, lost for words.